It was another warm day. The sun shined with an iridescent brilliance over the land as the keeper of these parts began to walk through the well-tended crops. For generations, she and her fellows had tamed these lands after they were discovered by a long-forgotten ancestor. But this heritage mattered little to some of the flora which were becoming dry in today's heat. The farmer noticed this and smiled. Without hesitation, she brought her hands together and closed her eyes. With practiced grace, the farmer created a ball of water before her, allowing it to swell in size until it was nearly as large as her. Once satisfied, she opened her eyes, admiring her handiwork as the ball of liquid floated in the open air. With the back of her hand, she repeatedly waved through the air. All of the water from the orb began to spray and wash over the harvest in controlled bursts. The water fell on her eager crops like gentle rain as the soil was made softer from this generous drink. After the spell was gone, she smiled and looked over her crops, watching them glisten with water droplets like stars against the midnight sky. She chuckled, telling her crops that they'd get their feed later as she continued about her daily chores. One would think that such labors would challenge a person of smaller stature, but not so for this woman, not for Alalafel, for whom magic is almost second nature. She may not have the skills of a high mage from the city, but a few tricks is all you need to make the daily work get along just fine. After all, it was her predecessors who claimed these lands long ago, and they did so not with brute force, but with a sharp mind and eagerness to match it. Good day everyone! Thank you for stopping in. For today, we'll be discussing what it means to be amongst those of the lucrative Lalafell. The first and most obvious thing that strikes an observer when comparing the Lalafell to any other race is their diminutive size. They are incredibly small and almost childlike to most other races within the world, and their appearance does them no favors as many Lalafell maintain a youthful complexion for most of their lives. Despite aging very well, the Lalafell are much more quick and agile than their parents would suggest. While you'll never see them performing great feats of strength and resilience like that of the Rogadin, they are very fast on their feet and have made up for their lack of brawn with clever brains. For a good example of this, we need not look much further than that of the Arcane Realm. Almost all Lalafells have a naturally deep pool of personal aether from birth, lending most of them to understand or use magic to some degree. Not only that, they have very intuitive minds that have assisted them in the early days as agrarians, lending them to becoming expert botanists that were able to turn even the most harsh and rigid terrain into a place of bountiful harvest. This idea of turning nothing into something of profit nurtured their numeric and logistic views, eventually turning them into successful tradesmen. In fact, it was likely the promise of trade that saw the original Lalafell sail from their ancestral island in the southern seas up to Aldenard, eventually settling within Eorzea. While it's not known exactly when or where the first settlers made landfall, the Lalafell began to make a historic name for themselves during the Fifth Astral Era. They would end up playing crucial roles in the creation of both the tactical country of Nim and the magically gifted state of Mach. Both civilizations became well known for things that were inspired by the Lalafell living within them. Nim, for example, was considered a highly academic society that boasted one of the strongest naval forces the world had ever seen. Not only that, but Nim was a center of trade and culture. Likewise, those within the country of Mach began to explore and create some of the strongest thaumaturgic spells still used today. However, a war involving these civilizations and others eventually led to the Sixth Umbral Calamity, also known as the Calamity of Water. This saw large parts of the world flooded for an extended period of time. Almost everything belonging to the city of Mach 
was either killed or drowned, with only a few scattered survivors eventually resettling the southern wastes of Eorzea that are known today as the Plains of Thanalan. As for the Nimian Lollafell, those who survived the war used their superior navy as a means to navigate the flood and travel back to their ancestral homeland. But amongst the Lollafell that survived that calamity, two distinct types would emerge, the Plainsfolk and the Dunesfolk. But before we get into them, let us discuss the Lollafell as a people. Culturally, the Lollafell are extremely social creatures. They place a strong emphasis on familial bonds and respecting one's heritage. However, this has not made them exclusively social with members of their own race. Quite the opposite. They take great pride and enjoyment out of building friendships with other races. This energetic and often charismatic behavior would combine with their intuitive minds and lead to them excelling in economic studies more than any other race in Eorzea. As such, many of the other races find it hard to stay entirely angry at most Lalafell, given their youthful appearance combined with their usual jovial behavior. As for language and communication, the original Lalafell in tongue is almost completely non-existent from those living within Eorzea. They adopted the Hur's common tongue the fastest of all races because of their social nature and the only Lalafell known to commonly make use of their original language are those that still live in their ancestral islands down south. Making clothes for a Lalafell can be much easier than most other races, as they require less fabric. They typically wear baggy or loose-fitting attire that obscures their rotund physique and provides decent insulation due to their natural weakness of extreme cold. However, there is a common trend amongst their outfits, and that would be a scarf. Making for a fashion statement is only part of their intention, as a good scarf can be used to keep them warm or even become a flag whilst out on the high seas or in a desert, making them much easier to find when needed despite being so short. Like many races, the Lalafell found their genetics bifurcated as they began to develop within different climates. Most commonly, these two clans of Lalafell are known as the Plainsfolk and the Dunesfolk. Both clans are descendant from the same group that originally traveled from their homeland in the Southern Seas. Despite their clear genetic differences, you'll rarely if ever find these two clans of Lalafell at odds with each other. In fact, marriage between these two clans is so common that almost every Lalafell in Eorzea has the blood of both clans in them to varying degrees. These clans lack any strict familial structure. As such, one of the only common themes seen between them is that they respect their elders and predecessors. Even so, how they respect their elders and predecessors usually changes depending on the family. Starting with the Plainsfolk, they are the closest you can get to how they originally looked coming from their ancestral homeland. Nowadays, you'll find the greatest number of these Lalafell living in and around the island of Vilbrand, the large island off of Aldenard's west coast. The Plainsfolk are most well known for their adventurous and free-spirited ways. It's all too common to see them becoming pioneers and scouts as they look for new lands to tame. This is why Lalafell and farmers are just as easy to see, because what else do you do with the land you've discovered but settle it? But to those Lalafell not looking to adventure or tend to the earth, many more end up developing a trade. While of course some of them have become salesmen, it's much more common to see a plains folk as an engineer or smith creating the item rather than selling it. With all that being said, Many Plainsfolk are known to be very relaxed and carefree, making them into one of the most peaceful and friendly groups all across Eorzea's western coast. Physically, there are few differences between the appearance of most Lalafell, but something of note when it comes to the Plainsfolk are the vertically aligned pupils. It's theorized that they develop this way to mitigate the sunlight reflecting off of water as well as assist them with their early botanical days when working under a blazing sun. 
When it comes to the names of the Plains folk, they possess what is known as a given name and a courtesy name. The given name is bestowed upon them at birth, usually providing some form of familial tie. However, the courtesy name is earned upon reaching adulthood only, and is unique to every Plains folk. Their given name and courtesy name are some of the only uses of their original language from the Southern Islands, and makes heavy use of repetition and rhyme. It's very common for their names to roll off of the tongue like a poem, and many will find that the naming conventions of the Plains Folk are very similar to that of the Dunes Folk. And yet, despite them seeming nearly the same, there are indeed differences and only those well-versed in Lullafellon heritage will notice the changes. But this is where the differences between the Plains and Dunes begin to emerge, starting with their names, and of course, their magic. Despite the Lullafell's natural affinity for magic, many Plains folk don't become fully-fledged mages. They prefer a more hands-on lifestyle, and this has certainly made them the more tough and physically resilient of the two clans. But do not underestimate them, as all Lollafellan mages can be dangerous. But the strongest amongst them would definitely be the Dunes Folk. As previously stated, the Dunes Folk are descendants of those Lollafell who lived within the civilization of Mach. The Calamity of Water forced those who survived to retreat up into higher elevations within Eorzea's outlands. This made the Dunes folk become nomadic for a time, as they were displaced and had no solid homeland to call their own. This was the time when the Dunes folk gained their namesake and ceased to be considered the same as their Plains folk cousins. During their time living amongst the crags and sands of Thanalan, their eyes begin to adapt to the terrain. The Dunes folk now possess eyes that resemble glass panes. This is because of a membrane that now covers their iris and protects their pupils from the natural debris of southern Eorzea. That being said, they didn't remain nomadic forever. The first society to be created after the devastation of Mach was a country called Belladia. This was a place entirely constructed by the Lollafell and became a rallying point for all the nomadic tribes of Dunes folk to once again become a single culture. However, Belladia wouldn't remain peaceful for long. Eventually, a war of succession divided the country into two city-states known as Sildi and Ulda. As many of you will recognize, the latter of the two still survived to the present day, and has become a centerpiece for art, trade, and the arcane studies. The creation and progress of Ulda is a testament to the Lollafellan ideology of cultivating something from nothing. Though the city-state thrives as a beacon of self-sustained wealth, it also serves as a home for all of the Lollafell looking to tap into their magical potential. The Arzaneth Ossuary, which is a library within Ulda, is one of, if not the largest collection of arcane and thaumaturgic records in the world, all thanks to the diligence of the Dunes folk. Thanks to these records, plenty of Lollafell have trained in, bolstered, and advanced the mystic arts within Ulda, potentially leading to a new golden age of magical research. But to the Dunes folk not interested in magical studies, their sharp wits can have other uses. It's all too common within Thanalan to see a Dunes folk Lollafell becoming a shrewd merchant and a cunning leader. They may not be as big and strong as most races, but why do they need to be when they can simply pay to have their problems taken care of? But beyond that, some Dunes folk still maintain that wanderlust brought on by their nomadic days, making some of them become rather adventurous, much like their Plains folk cousins. This turned many of them into reliable miners, as they began to explore the many mountains, caves, and crags of Eorzea. So as you now know, the Lollafell are surprisingly diverse given their size, making for just as many gardeners and adventurers as they do mages and merchants. 
Their cheerful and welcoming demeanor has endeared them to many other races, making fast friends very easily. But be wary, some Lalafell know just how clever they are and will not hesitate to take full advantage of a situation if it benefits them. But that being said, you should count yourself fortunate if you count a Lalafell amongst your company, because you never know. Their clever wit may save you in more ways than one. And with that, keep all this in mind before I see you again. And until then, stay safe my friends. Thank you all for watching to the end. If you enjoyed this video, why not subscribe and share this with your fellow adventurers? With your help, I'll try to reach out even further and bring even greater stories to you. Although, I'd be remiss if I didn't acknowledge my biggest contributors. A grand thank you to Papaya Cyan, Rovacus, Potato, The Yellow Couch, Sage Mouse, Cezani, Tyrodox, and Net, with an additional nod to the scholarships on screen. Links to things like my Twitter and that of my channel artist Caddy can be found in the description. Thank you all for your viewership, as well as your support, and I hope all of you have a wonderful day. Class dismissed.